Welcome to Artisanal Pasta Tools. Today we're going to talk about the first product that we ever made, and that was the Corsetti stamp, and that led, its, uh, led us into several other pasta tools that people who are familiar with our site are, are probably uh, have looked at, at them several times already. They're, they're all very, very interesting, but none is more interesting than the Corsetti stamp. The Corsetti stamp has a, a really an ancient, almost an ancient history. It goes back uh, to the, uh, uh, around the 13th century. But the uh, knights, when they went off to the Far East and, and they wanted to have a reminder of their homeland, and so they had these stamps cards with their family shields on them. And they took them, with, took that, that with them to the Far East. And uh, that's apparently how they began. Anyway, it's essentially a very simple tool called the Corsetti Stamp. And the Corsetti Stamp is merely a product of the function of this little tool. We have uh, two pieces. We have an underside with a bowl. This is essentially like a cookie cutter. It cuts out the coin, the pasta coin, which will fit exactly on top of this bottom half. Then you have the top half, which I refer to as a press. It also has a carving on its underside. So you simply get that coin, you put it on top of here, and you give it a gentle press and you have a corsetti. Now we'll do that, we'll do a brief run for you later with the actual dough. Um, it's a fascinating tool. We carry it in 23 different woods, several different styles, and several uh, different carvings, which are all hand done. We use uh, no machinery of any sort in the assembly of these products. Uh, any design or feature on them is all hand done. We use machines to cut the wood, of course, but any feature on it is totally hand done. No templates, uh, no digital readouts of any sort. So these are truly hand done, a very, very unique site. As far as I know, we are the largest producer of artisanal pasta tools, handmade artisanal pasta tools in the, in, in the world. Some of these tools are not even made in Italy anymore. So anyway, um, let's get on with it. Uh, you basically have seen the form. Here is a, essentially a little sampling of several. This is my personal collection, but th this is a small sampling of the different uh, types of designs. If you order one of these stamps from us, I can assure you they'll all have a variation because they are hand done. Um, so no two will be alike. So we got some dough here today. And this is uh, the doughs that are used for the corsetti are like almost all the doughs. They, they're variations of, of flour. Uh, some people say they were all made with whole wheat eggs, uh, whole wheat eggs and water. Some uh, claim they should be made with uh, uh, chestnut flour. There are all these variants. I think all of them work. I like to put a little semolina. The older recipes uh, had semolina in them. General purpose now seems to be more popular because semolina is more difficult to, uh, to roll. It's more difficult to mix. Uh, I think it adds a little stability to the design, but I wouldn't let that stop you if you don't have semolina near you or you don't have it in your pantry. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, the idea, at least as I see these tools, it's to enjoy the art of making pasta. It's really that simple. We don't have to complicate it. We want to be as true as we can to, to the traditions. But I, I wouldn't let that stymie you in trying to get to know how to use these tools. Because in Italy, there, there essentially were, really were no rules in, in my, from what I've read. The variants are so innumerable, it's hard 
to, to say this is exactly how they did it. It's not to say that they didn't generally do it a certain way, but the variants are innumerable. So anyway, uh, this is some dough I made earlier. This is a general purpose uh, flour dough, which I put one cup of semolina and three cups of uh, all purpose. I put oil, put some salt, uh, and I put some egg. And uh, so I just wanted to make that. I didn't want to bore you with the making of the dough at this point. We, in the future, we'll probably be doing some uh, videos uh, on, on dough making. So, and we'll associate them with each one of the tools. So what we want to do here, oh, let me get the rolling pin. Just give it a quick little roll out. And uh, oh, I hope you can pick that up. Now we'll just put our machine on. Start at your widest setting. Fold over itself. And you, you just gradually bring it down. I highly recommend these little machines if uh, you don't enjoy the pin. Uh, I know people who I think are, are more proficient with the pin than they are with the machine. It's uh, just incredible to see some of them at work. I'll put this here. And I'll use it later. I don't want to overwhelm you. I always like to cover my dough with a, with a little towel. doesn't have to be damp. Uh, unless it's a long period of time, I'm one of those who will wring out a towel as, as much as I possibly can, but it will have dampness and I'll put it over the pasta. But that's if you're going to leave it long term on the counter and you don't want to put it in the refrigerator. Also, I think it's very important to point out that if you put a, a pasta in the refrigerator, that pasta is going to tighten up. And believe me, you don't want that because when you go to roll it out, especially if you do it with a pin, that thing has so much elasticity that it's like dealing with a rubber band. So you want to make sure that your, your uh, pasta is room temperature so that uh, a lot of that uh, unnecessary elastic, uh, elasticity is eliminated. It still requires some working out, but that's usually very, very do doable. Okay, so here you have your piece of pasta, a nice little sheet. I think it's nice to make it so you can do two rows, which most machines uh, will accommodate. That, that actually is one of the advantages if you use a pin, because with the pin you can make a full sheet and just go boom, boom, boom. These are not that time consuming. Everybody will say, I don't have the time. I, they, pasta making does not require that much time. But there is an element that you have to factor in is if you enjoy it. If, if you don't enjoy it, then it's probably better for you to go to a store and buy it. But it really does, you'd be amazed how quickly you can produce a couple of pounds of these. I'll show you. Okay, so as we talked about, well, let's get one that's got a, a cutting on it, huh? Okay. There we go. Here's one. Okay. Now, this has one cutting, has another cutting, right? We talked about <coughs> the cutter. So what you're going to see now is first, we have to cut the coins, the pasta coins. Now, if you can just get in there. Now, occasionally, it's a good idea to lubricate your corsetti with some flour, just in case they stick. But having said that, you can see how efficient that is. Now, we think the way we do these, that it facilitates this kind of wonderful cutout because our stamps go through a six stage hand polish. And it is, it is probably 
uh, one of the most time consuming aspects of making our corsetti. But it works. You can see here, this is a corsetti that I bought. It actually, I was so disappointed in the quality of it. It was, um, um, it works, first of all. I don't want to say that it works, and I really don't want to speak ill of the product, because that's not what it's about. But look at the quality of that product, and look at the quality of that. You see the hand polish? You can see it just glares at you. And that's what's going to release, release that stamp. Look at that. That's the reason we got involved in this. We felt we could produce something that was more artful, more beautiful, and still have the utility of the, the original. And I think we've far surpassed that. Okay, so right now you can see that we've cut our corsetti. It's, we simply get one of the discs, we put it on top, we get our top, which we refer to as the press, and we give it a little stamp, and you can see how beautifully that comes out. And it was really that easy. If you turn it around, you can see it again. And I, uh, you know, your guests will just get a kick out of this thing. It is, uh, it's always met with oohs and ahs because this is a relatively still rare pasta. So that fundamentally is what the Corsetti is about. Uh, they're very, very easy to store. Uh, all you have to do is put them in the refrigerator, uh, freezer. I have prepared a little, let me, let me just show you how long? No. It took less than a minute. I think we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. We have twelve corsetti here. For me, but it depends on what role this course would play in your dinner. But I'm assuming it would play, it wouldn't be a main course. If it's not a main course, ten, twelve of these, in, it, for the way that I serve, would be more than adequate. And you saw it took about one minute to make enough for one course. And I'll show you how long it takes. Now, again, the thicker you make the pasta, the better the impression will probably be. Okay? But I, I, I always tell people that just the shape in the fact that a, a uh, a design will be on that pasta is enough to excite your guests. They'll just get a kick out of it. And uh, I wouldn't get too caught up in, uh, you know, the fineness of the detail of the, how it shows up. Because no matter what, when you put an impression pasta in water, it's going, boiling water and cook it, it's going to expand. So, I mean, there's just no way. And when it expands, it's the, the uh, design will suffer a tad. But my, as I always say, who cares? Okay. If the dough is good and the sauce is good and you've made this with love and you're enjoying it with people who love you and you love them, look, it's just nothing but joy. Okay. Now, okay. How long did that take? A minute and a half? Okay. There you go. And I've made essentially in less than five minutes uh, a course, probably four minutes max, a course for uh, one person already. So I'll say you have eight people, that's 30 minutes, and you've made a, you, you can freeze these. Uh, gotten a little tray here. Just put them in like this. I, I use a parchment paper because I like parchment paper. It really keeps your pans clean. Uh, you don't need to put flour in, but there's no harm in not having the parchment paper and not having, just put your flour on your pan and stick it in the refrigerator and in 10 minutes these will be hard. 
and these will store for weeks. Just put them in a Ziploc back, a, a bag and these will store for weeks. So you don't have to make them the day of the, and they'll be just as good. Throw them in boiling water in a few minutes, they'll be fine. So that's all you have to do. Now I like to put my corsetti, I like to put my corsetti in a Ziploc bag and then I put them in uh, a Pyrex dish, a large Pyrex dish, because I think it gives them a tad more protection. But you don't have to do that. You really don't. If you're going to use them in a few weeks, you don't have to put them in a Pyrex dish. It's just a matter of habit for me, and it does give them a little bit more protection. But if they're going to be consumed within that time frame, you'll be fine. So now, also a lot of people ask, how do we clean our tools? And uh, with the Corsetti, as I, as I mentioned earlier, don't make a sticky pasta dough. It, pasta dough is, is more dry, than, is drier than a, a, even a pizza dough. So you don't want, just, we'll, we'll do some recipes for you and, and maybe that will make you feel more comfortable with making it and, and using it for this type of application. But any dough, most recipes are pretty reliable in terms of the flour water ratio and you can adjust it you have to adjust it sometimes because of humidity and what have you so uh, you just adjust it uh, marginally and and you should be fine just stick it if it doesn't if your finger doesn't stick to it after you put it in I, you're probably fine get a little piece roll it on the on your board and if it doesn't stick it's not going to stick on this and keep your tools lubricated with flour and you will be fine. Now I also like to keep uh, a pastry brush. You could use a pastry brush or you can use a, uh, a toothbrush that's dedicated uh, and all it's used for is your, are your artisanal tools and all you have to do is go like that. That's all. You don't have to go put anything else on them. Just go like that. And that's all you have to do. Put them back in your bag and they're ready for next time. These are all sealed so that you get no wood taste from the, the Corsetti uh, and you should be fine. We use the traditional woods. We use beech, walnut, uh, maple is really one of my favorite woods. It takes, as you can see, it just takes an absolutely beautiful shine. We process it exactly the same way is we process all the woods, but uh, it just takes an absolutely gorgeous sign. So now here is beach. Okay, now that is our, we call that the classic, but you see, we just added some detail. And we usually forewarn our clients that we'll do a little extra detail for them because we want to make it special. It's really quite simple. So anyway, that is fundamentally uh, what our, uh, tool is about. Uh, we really encourage you to try it. Uh, it's becoming more and more popular. More and more chefs are calling us up and, and ordering them uh, and your guests will really be wowed by, by them. It's, a, it's just a great, great uh, pasta traditionally dressed with uh, pesto. I make a pesto out of rosemary. Uh, make it exactly like I would make it out of uh, basilica. But I, I love rosemary. I blanch the rosemary first, and then I treat it just as if it was basil. Okay, also as a, an addendum to this uh, video, we, we like to point out that all of our corsetti come in a beautiful burlap bag. We have several different colors that we will put together with whatever wood is chosen, we will put different color combinations because different woods look better with different colors. So uh, what I've done is just given you a little list here of the woods, uh, pardon me, a, a little uh, display of the bags that we use. We have burgundy, we have orange, we have green, and they're just absolutely beautiful. We have uh, a lighter, burgundy, a kind of like a little purple, and then we have a natural jute, which is also very, very well received. 
So each one of these essentially comes wrapped. If you want to ever give it as a gift, uh, we ship directly to the, the uh, address that you give us. And when they open it up, in this case, we decided with the color of wood, we did it in, in a lovely black tissue. So they would just open it up like this. And we think that blacks look beautiful with that white kind of a maple. And both pieces are wrapped. They're wrapped individually. Same thing. And we do it, as I say, with the, the purple, the green, the orange, and we have all kinds of colorful tissue. The box is also lined with the colorful tissue that it's received in. So anyway, we think that that's a real additive. We, we want our gifts to be presented in the best possible way because we think they're very special. And whether it's a gift or for you, makes no difference to us. We want it to arrive looking very, very special. Thank you.